Welcome back to Cryptolytics, giving a fresh take on crypto analytics. And this is your crypto recap where I cover some of the things going on in the crypto space. So let's jump in. Okay, so let's just get straight in to the Solana ecosystem update. First, I'm going to cover price action on Solana just quickly, just touch on it. I am in a short at the moment on Solana, but that's barely anything compared to my spot position, which is slowly farming away points and also farming more yield and all that sort of stuff so i'm okay with this we're still in a bull market so it's not a big deal so where did solana come to we actually got a massive drop so this is where i opened my short around 180 because i started here and then i added to the position at around 190 and so my position's sitting around around 185 i think and i, I did post an update on that when i was up 56 percent it's just a nibble it's a very small position so that's just to get points in drift because they've got a 10x points boost right now and, and also well I just got a signal, so I took it, but I was traveling, so it was not a huge position. But anyway, 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 let's just move on, have a look. So what level um, did we hit and where are we right now? So we're at the 100 period daily moving average. So you can see here that acted as support. So we wicked all the way down to the 20 week exponential moving average. And then we wicked straight off of it. That was 125. We got as low as 122.44 on Coinbase. So that's just spot. I think Binance actually went all the way down to 118 or 119 or something like that, which would have been an amazing buying opportunity for sure. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get those levels. I bought at 138. So I missed out on a lot of this because I was away from my computer because I spend so much time on my computer that I just wanted to get out for the weekend. But anyway, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I didn't catch a knife. I waited for some more confirmation. So I waited for this candle to close with this big wick. And then I was like, cool, I'm going to buy some more spot. Now, you know, where could we go if we just kept falling? Well, 107, I think is the next point, which is the 200 period daily moving average. We actually haven't seen retests of these moving averages, especially the, uh, the 100, which is where we are right now. Since we broke out, of the entire band of moving averages back in October last year. So we literally haven't really had a big retest of any of these levels since October last year. So I think it's pretty fair that we're getting some mean reversions at the moment because literally we had, we've had nothing. We've had retests of the 21, smooth moving average on the 12 hour, then that's going to happen because that's very short term. So that's really not a big deal. But the only thing we've really had tests of is the 50 day EMA. Oh, that's 21 daily EMA, the white one, sorry. Again, which is going to get touched a lot more because it's fast. So 50 day EMA, we had a, t a test here, bounced off it. We had a test here, bounced off of it. We've all, anytime we've touched it since October, we've bounced off of it. The fact that we're below it is a little bit more bearish overall. And we haven't even retested it yet. We did get a wick up here, but I think it was front run for the most part. And so now we are stuck between generally, you know, when you're stuck between these important moving averages, the 20 week, for example, and the 50 day, we do pinball because, you know, we get bullish price action and then we get rejections and then we get supports and so we, we're probably going to pinball around here maybe we come down i don't i'm not so sure that we'll come down to 106 again but if we do i am going to buy as much as i can as much as i can solana because i feel like i missed a few decent buying opportunities for spot i've been leverage trading this a lot of, a lot more of this but i've just been holding for quite some time and i just feel like i want to buy more i did in my last video yeah i think it was the last video where i said that i sold right here at 100 and where is it where is it 204 i sold a bunch of my about 10 i think it was judo sol and then i turned a dca on which put me in i think the average that it bought was around 185 so is that really not a big deal like i could have just held on to that but uh i was just like let's try dca and it was over a decent period of time and i think it bought over this period here and it just sort of gave me a pretty average buyback if you compare it to where we are now, uh, but that's okay. I don't mind. I mean, we did get, I did get another buy signal here, uh, but and we got the sell signal there. So that was a sell, and it stopped out, and it was a buy, and then it went to sell. So this, these chop, this choppy price action is generally reversal price action. You know, when we get stuff like this, where we get these choppy bad buys and bad sells on the Hikonashi super trend. So yeah, anyway, let's move on because you know TA is not really that necessary in a ecosystem update, but I just wanted to cover price action on Sol quickly first uh, because I did actually cover it in this post. So yeah, here we go. That's the retest of the 20 week moving average. Already covered it. So let's get it on with it. <laughs> so this is in a bit of an old post now. April, tw April 11 was actually only five 
days ago, but you know, crypto space, things move fast. So Q1, Solana actually saw that it was the top blockchain by total transactions. Hopefully this is non-vote because if it's not known vote, then that's a bit of a cheat because there's a lot of vote transactions on Solana. So I'm not sure if that data has omitted the non-vote transactions. However, I mean, if you look at everything else, then you'll probably see that maybe it was non known vote. So when we look here, we'll see, I mean, Solana's $2.4 billion because they've actually cut this here. Maybe it's probably less if this is non-vote. Uh, this is vote, including vote transactions as well. Maybe this is less, but either way, regardless, we know there's a lot going on in Solana because of all the meme coin trading that happens, uh, which I think is coming to a slowdown, but not stopped completely. I think people are trying to shift the narratives uh, as well, especially influencers and stuff like that, trying to shift the narratives to stop people from buying so many meme coins so that things with conviction and fundamentals start to actually do well because there's so many meme coins now and it's diluted the space significantly. But anyway, <laughs> I'll cover more meme coin stuff later in this video, but we got essentially Tron next, which is mainly a stable coin or USDT chain because of the low fees and everything like that. I think also it's used for like gambling platforms and stuff as well. Nier's doing pretty well. I'm very surprised by this, how well, how many transactions Nier has. I would have thought BNB chain would have been next, but yeah, actually Nier protocol. So I'm not sure what's going on in Nier, but Definitely a fair bit of activity. Uh, and then we've got Say, pretty cool. Seeing Say doing well. Now, if we have a look down here at base, if there's a if there's a Q2 chart, we're gonna see base probably up here or up here or up here. So base is pretty much starting to become a large platform for new memes and everything like that. We're definitely seeing a lot more trading volume on base. So we're gonna have to see what this looks like for Q2. So once the end of Q2 hits, we're gonna watch this again. I'll go to crypto rank. Maybe someone else will do this and we're probably, probably gonna see base move up. Maybe we even see Ton up here because they're starting to gain traction as well, which is the Telegram chain. But anyway, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good indeed. Uh, the fact that Solana is doing more transactions than a lot of these chains combined is pretty impressive and proof that our conviction has paid off. <laughs> now, more news we have Solana Mail, which is a communications protocol that enables users to send and receive mail using a wallet address on Solana. Interesting. Has initiated DAP development for Solana Mobile, hinting at incentives for Solana Saga holders. So hopefully two as well, because I've got the two pre-ordered. But uh, yeah, we might get airdropped Solana Mail or Sol Mail. Wait, we've got Sol Chat. Now we've got Sol Mail. Pretty cool that we're seeing all these on-chain alternatives to SMS calls and email. I mean, that's pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. I don't know how, you know, how much adoption this stuff will get, but you know, if you're a crypto nerd, then <laughs> you'll want to probably get your hands dirty with this stuff as soon as you can, because I mean, this is really, really cool. So anyway, maybe we get an airdrop to the Solana Saga phone for the Soul Mail token. There isn't a token currently, I don't believe, but like any other team, they will highly likely launch a token at some point. But at the moment, all they're doing is developing the app. So anyway, something to keep an eye on. Now, uh, I just actually, there's a really cool chart here by Nali Quinn. It's a nice table of Solana ecosystem coins and their centralized exchange listings. So I, I just said exchange, but this is specifically for centralized exchanges. And I really think the alpha is in those that aren't yet listed across the board. Now I want to look at for Nasana. Nasana has been doing very well lately. Like its price action has actually been very impressive. It's one of the only tokens in my portfolio that's been, it's up in the last seven days, that and Guac, which is pretty random. Now Nasana is not listed at all on any centralized exchanges. So we're getting these really bullish price action on Nasana and it's not even listed on anything yet. This is all on chain bullishness. So Nasana is very, a very cool project. Again, no working product yet, just like all the other alternatives. Render, for example, no working product. I mean, I, I think a lot of the bullishness on the tokens at the moment is pure speculation. People trying to front run products. Uh, but maybe so, maybe it'll be a sell the news event when the product comes out, not really sure. People will start being able to farm the token though, and that will be sell pressure. But anyway, personally, I've got some pretty hefty rigs that I would love to start sharing my resources for, for AI and stuff like that. But we need projects to build that want to use crowdsourced compute. So we don't really have anything. There's probably projects in the pipe that are building that want to start to hook into things like Nasana and also Aether, for example, which is on Arbitrum, which I'll cover later in the video. And tokens like Render, all this GPU sharing and stuff like that. I mean, we can't really mine with GPUs anymore. Well, you can, 
but I think that mining tokens would be much better. I mean, look at grass, for example. That's been farming points away. Like I've been using that every day and you know, it's just a really nice interface. We want something like that grass sort of experience, but for sharing GPU and stuff like that. And hopefully they have an API that allows third parties to tap into those protocols because I want to build something that does just that or I'm actually part of a project, which I'm, I'll talk about later <laughs> when, when, uh, when we're looking at launching, but anyway, that taps into stuff like that. So anyway, let's have a quick look more at this list. We've got obviously Sol is completely listed. Rendar is completely listed, Bonk, so on and so forth. So I really think that maybe it's except for some of these older ones like Marinade, I don't think that's there's a lot of alpha there. Shadow, uh, there's been a little bit of fun on Shadow, but I don't want to cover that because, uh, you know, again, we need to wait for some of these projects to have working products so that, that way they can sort of build out properly. Uh, we have Wormhole, which got my airdrop at a little bit on my on the dip, but uh, even though I didn't probably need to because my allocation's pretty big, but I didn't get a chance to sell any Wormhole, unfortunately, because I was away, so I couldn't, and I couldn't claim it because of the congestion. And I was just like, I'll deal with this when I get back. And by the time I got back, it was at 70 cents and then went down to 50 cents or something like that. So too late to sell. And also I'm going to hold on to it because I want a Monad airdrop and then I'll cover this a little bit later. That's speculation only, but anyway. So yeah, that, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the reds, you know, Zeus. I think that's something that, you know, I want to see a working product again, but I think Zeus has a lot of potential and uh, whales token. That's a whales market token anyway. So, and soul chat, um, maybe we'll see soul mail in this list when it comes out, but soul chat did really well when it launched and then it's kind of bled ever since. But anyway, that's just showing that, you know, we've still got some alpha, some potential exchange listings still coming. Flux B, for example, and Lefinity, which uh, Lefinity has been a down only affair. I think Fluxbot's been actually had its good days and it's bad. Even when actually is barely listed on exchanges. I really want this uh, listed on perps. Personally, I think it's already on Bybit. I really want perps for when on Pinex because I've got a strategy that has just been amazing for when that I just want to automate as a bot. It's just been so good. I've been like seeing win after win after win after win, small loss win after win. And I'm just like, oh, I really want to automate this. But anyway, come on Pinex. I don't know. You're not listening, but if you are, please list when and perps because I really, really want that to be a bot. <laughs> anyway, moving on. I want to cover a project that is a potential competitor for Jupiter. Now it's called ranger there we go there it is there it's called ranger and let me zoom back out and they've been building for a while so there's actually no real current competitor to jupiter now we did a prism a couple of years ago if anyone remembers that and they had some cool stuff going on but they just i don't know why they fell off i guess it was just more like jupiter just was the place that people were going to jupiter's routing may have been better i'm not really sure but there's just no other alternative to jupiter so there's the one to keep your eyes on can't really give you much more alpha than that <laughs> only that they're, they're coming because they haven't really released too much information on what they plan on offering we don't really have a website or anything like that but it's a smart auto routing it also will offer data insights and and liquidity provisioning so they've got some decent advisors like you know soul big brain for example who's also a vc but anyway i can't really give you much more than that that they, it will just be a new aggregator but they'll probably offer some new features so we'll have to keep our eyes on it right and as I mentioned before, I was came back from the holiday and my W airdrop was fully claimed. I got about 6,600 wormhole tokens, which at its peak was a five figure airdrop. But then we dropped a lot. <laughs> we dropped a lot. So anyway, I'm actually hearing stirrings that wormhole stakers may get early access to buying Monad or possibly an airdrop. So that's what I've seen at the moment. Staking is not live yet. Now I actually got 2000 W tokens from staking Pith. So there's a good chance that this could be how you get monad tokens why do i say that well let me find the tab and let's bring it over and this is not solana but anyway this is a new chain that's coming out uh monad and they raised 225 million dollars which is very impressive and the angel investors include rune from make robinson from wormhole robinson from wormhole so again this is one of the reasons why there's a good chance that there's some small partnership or something like that could happen between the two so yep i mean they there was definitely an investment there. So there's connections, right? There's connections, strong connections. Uh, also, we had Mert, which is Solana legend Mert, and Luca from Pudgy Penguins, as well as a few others. I just post broke the card up into two, so it was a lot easier to read. The Coinbase Ventures, Electric Capital. We also had Taproot Wizard, and these are your angel investors, essentially. So led by Paradigm. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And Monad is a EVM-based chain that is looking to do like 10k plus tps sub second finality pretty much like you know trying to position itself as an evm solana killer uh but yeah we'll have to see how it goes but the 
founder, Ern Hon, which is, uh, I think, a Hong Kong name, actually, uh, has been placed on a number of developers to watch lists, right? So some very smart people in the space have been have been telling us to watch this guy. And so we got to watch this guy and we got to watch what he's doing. And Monad is what he's doing. So anyway, so I'm not selling my wormhole. Uh, I will just stake it. I actually bought more. So I got about seven and a half K now tokens. I'll wait to stake it. Not much you can really do in DeFi at the moment with the wormhole tokens. So, I mean, all I'm doing is holding on to it at the moment. But yeah, when we get staking, we're going to get into it. And then hopefully we get a Monad airdrop. That'd be really, really cool. Now, also, if we check our phantom wallets, we can now see what kind of KMNO allocation we get. I've got 21,000 tokens. I think the price currently on KMNO is, just looking at my other computer, around 15 cents. So, I mean, for me, which is about a $3,000 airdrop. Really nice, really, really nice. Um, so we're actually in season two now of the Camino points farming. So this is season one. So that this is the snapshots taken, it's done, it's ready to go. And when the token launches, then that's pretty much what's gonna happen. Now, this thing is gonna probably just draw down like crazy. Let's let's be honest, like at this point in the, in the cycle, where we're probably gonna get some sideways action on Bitcoin, as I mentioned in the last video, well, we're probably gonna see it sell off pretty aggressively. So if you're in drift, like myself, I'm probably gonna short it. Uh, and also I'm gonna take, probably sell half of it as, as, as soon as I can and then just leave the rest and uh, and try and use it in DeFi. It's a very small allocation, I think, compared to some of the other people out there. But uh, anyway, I want a moon bag and I will probably, of the profits that I take, I'll probably DCA back in as it does its crazy drawdown. I mean, we saw what happened to Wormhole, right? I mean, this is what happened to Wormhole. So we're probably going to see similar price action. I actually bought Wormhole around 50 cents, which is, was a really nice buy. But it's down 182%. Well, it went down at its lowest point about 253 percent from its all-time high so uh these poor airdrops i mean but this also happened to jupiter remember like jupiter saw the massive drawdown as well right so it had this huge drawdown here well it looked huge at the time where it did this but the thing that the thing that's different right is that jupiter actually has a fundamental purpose for holding it now so at the start there was really no reason to hold it uh, and then we had that breakout and then things just went parabolic essentially well, this would have been a really good time to take profits which is actually when i did so dollar 30 as i mentioned in videos ago i actually took profit around a dollar 30 so uh, that's actually perfect for my strategy uh, and i've still got 10,000 Jupiter tokens that I'm staking for LFG airdrops, but half of the, the like I said, 22,000 almost, the other 10,000 went to my holiday. <laughs> well, not really, actually. I didn't spend anywhere near as much as what the airdrop was worth. So if there is a solid reason for holding the airdrop, then we'll probably start to see this as well. Maybe we, And maybe we'll get a decent push when the market starts to pick up again, right? So we've got to wait for the market sentiment to shift back to bullish. And then we might start to see something similar to this for wormhole. Now, again, it has to be something, there has to be something, right? So it can't just be governance. Like I think it has to be governance with a twist or some other reason it's a lot of things like dimension and celestia for example people held on to their airdrops because of you know staking for airdrops the only airdrops i've seen so far is the prism airdrop if you delegate it to their validator because they use the stake drop thing which i'll cover later in the video but we need something in order for wormhole to do this because wormhole could very well do this if we get some solid reason for people to hold it so anyway we'll have to wait for that to reveal itself now I want to cover a really cool project that I found. It's actually on the LFG launchpad, I think for the next vote, but it's called Sanctum. Now Sanctum is a project that uses LSTs or liquid stake tokens to collect high yield from liquid staking tokens and fees. So the result is the token infinity. Now I wish I had an easier to type like INF or something like this, but I think the whole token name is infinity. But anyway, essentially what it does is it uses liquid stake tokens and yield from liquidity pools to it behind the scenes in the back end completely to farm high APY for SOL. So it uses liquid stake tokens and liquidity pools, as I said, but then you minted a token. So you've got a solid liquid token that you can move around, put in DeFi, all that sort of stuff with something like 12%, 12.41% quite right now APY on Solana, which is insane. That's almost double the standard yield for Solana, which is about 7% roughly, right? So this is kind of, this is a really cool thing. And, and also remember, they don't have a token yet. They're going to, they want to launch on the LFG. I'll probably vote for these guys. I'll probably vote for these guys. I've actually converted 10 of my Jitto Sol to, to this, but I can't do anything with it right now. So we don't really have anything in DeFi right now for it. But again, this is really, really cool. And this is a fair, this is a very high APY. 
for a liquid stake token, you can just swap straight out of immediately. You don't have to go around and mess around with liquidity pools and stuff like that. And there's definitely a fair bit of interest in it. And the reason why I say that is if you have a look at something like Deep by Llama, you'll see, oh, there you go. You can put in MarginFi if you want it to get stuck in there. <laughs> I'm like kind of jaded by MarginFi. You know, if you if you know, then you know, right? There was a bit of FUD going on with the MarginFi. It's like fighting, infighting, or there was fighting going on on, on, on X. It's old news now, so I'm not going to really cover it, but that resulted in a massive drawdown of TVL in MarginFi. Hey, let's have a look. Let's have a look at Sanctum's TVL boost as well. Just go over to DeFi Llama, shall we? And we'll see MarginFi has has a 50% reduction in their TVL over the last seven days. And a lot of people are actually putting their money in Solend, actually, um, because Solend has started a new points system. So, and they're like, yeah, we'll give you boosts if you come from MarginFi, which I don't know. A little bit vampiric but whatever is what it is but i did see in this list sanctum right look at that over the last month we've had a 300 percent increase in tvl although that's over probably zero so you know it looks a lot more impressive i also have ondo very impressive that's the rwa narrative so real world asset narrative um that's uh yield backed into stable coins using treasury bonds but anyway um yeah we're seeing sanctum pick up a fair bit look at that so it's actually been around since September last year. I didn't, actually didn't even hear about it all back then. But um, now that there's talk of the token, I think people are like, airdrop, airdrop, airdrop. Remember Jito, the Jito, the Jito token airdrop is insane. I don't think we'll get that again with Sanctum, but this is very cool. Very, very, very cool. High yield baked into Solana for a liquid stake token. I think quite powerful. And I think that's who's going to get my vote. I, I like the power sharing, just kind of like a deep in, deep in narrative on Solana. That was kind of cool. But I, I don't know, this, this seems like... Uh, Something that I think I will put my vote on personally. Up to you. And, uh, you know, let's cover the rest of the projects that uh, that will be on the LFG launchpad in a couple of days' time. So here's we have the Sanctum So, um, and that's a new primitive on built in Solana, which I've already explained in detail, so I won't cover that again. We have Uprock.com, which is a deep in network fueling the AI internet future. It's a buzz process for auto earning tokens. By downloading the Uprock app, registering, you earn UPT tokens. And when <laughs> there's a small reward as well now this is for phone so i'm not so sure is, is this using graphics processing on on mobile on mobile phones i guess there's a lot of mobile phones out there so i, I suppose that's pretty good uh, if they've already got an app that's actually pretty impressive to be honest and if you can get this right now then why not but it, i think if they don't have an, a token yet so maybe upt is not available yet i'm, I'm assuming so maybe it's it's pre-farming maybe it's pre-farming tokens right before the token becomes available so this the name of this project is kind of silly because it's like what is it sourceful i don't even know like how would you even pronounce that anyway um this is the one i was talking about virtual power plant so essentially this is like distributed energy resources so for example mixed use energy systems like especially in developing countries where they don't have good grid connectivity to sort of a larger centralized power grid i think it'd be really good for this sort of thing where you can actually share Re, uh, power resources and trade it with tokens. So this is a project similar to something that I was looking at developing back in 2021, and uh, it's on Solana. So that makes it even better than what I was going to do because <laughs> it was going to be our own chain. But uh, the goal would be to accelerate the transition to renewable energy by enabling individuals to contribute their DERs to get rewarded. So DERs are energy resources. I don't know what the D stands for. Distributed energy resources. So very cool project. Uh, very cool project. I do like the concept of this. And I hope if they don't actually get the vote that they still launch because I like the concept of this personally. I don't know about speculating or something like this though, because this is again like your, although actually when you think about it, maybe you want the token to be worth more. So you buy it so that, you know, if you do share your resources, then it's, you know, you're, the tokens you're getting that you're farming are worth more. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is like a kind of a potentially just like a farm and dump token. So I'm not really sure they would need some sort of incentives to stop people from just jeeting their tokens immediately when they find them and the same could be said for that uh for this eupt as well to be honest so it's very hard for tokens like this to keep people sticky and stop stopping them from selling their tokens especially when they're just like a farm token or like a uh, mining token or whatever you want to call it so it's always interesting to see what these developers do to stop people from selling their, their token and there's nothing called monkey decks which i think is a bridge solution so a coin to bridge solution built on mayan wormhole rails so if it's using mine, mine actually is a DEX where you can perform swaps from tokens to tokens that across bridge across multiple chains. So anyway, we've got Ninth Heroes, which is a third shooter from ex-developers of Iconic 
Halo and Rainbow Six. Wow, that's pretty crazy. These guys are developing a game on Solana. They've got the token called Meow, which is interesting. I guess it's going to be cats. Yep, that's, there you go. Cats in spacesuits. <laughs> Cat debts. There you go. I knew that was going to be something like that. There's no information on the distribution or anything like that, or even the game, really. But uh, I guess if there's devs from Halo and Rainbow Six, then it's probably going to be pretty decent. Uh, the, another, the next one is Digital Social ID. So Digital Social ID, Makers of Solana ID. Turn your wallets into super accounts and earn powered by... Concordium and Mina and built for Solana. So Mina Protocol, interesting. I don't know if these guys will get much of a vote because I don't think people know what the potential is here. But if you want more information on it, then you can go and read more about it. Again, it's Digital Social ID. If you want to go and check out their docs. Anyway, that's it for that. And let's move on. Now, I did mention the Zeus token and I did a post on it and I reposted ZK Ape post where this was a really nice tight range where basically the token launched and also people got an airdrop for it if you've been voting in the LFG launch pad and it just went kind of sideways, which is actually quite bullish essentially. And it did squeeze up and it did break out. So that was the price action there. And then we got this big pump to the upside. So I actually bought more down here. It actually came down below my buy price, but because I got an airdrop, my average is down here at 0 0.3. So I don't feel so bad about that, but we did actually recover. So April 14, that was a couple of days ago. So we did sell off pretty aggressively, in fact, and then we got a pretty nice recovery. This is, looks pretty strong, actually. This kind of recovery here from the lows, 100%. That's not bad. It's definitely one to watch, but as I said prior, you know, we've got to wait for a working product. But that was just that post. I just wanted to, to cover it quickly. And, uh, and yeah, we're still holding above that $1 level. No, we're not. We're down below $1 level. We're at 70 cents. We actually got to the dollar mark again, but uh, we're not really... We're not really getting it. We're not really capturing it at the moment. But nevertheless, anyway, like that was just something I wanted to quickly cover. Now, the next LFG, I'm just going to zoom out here so we can actually see the picture. Uh, but the next LFG launch pad token is Sharkify, which you may already have an airdrop to. So they've announced a 7.5% total supply allocation for platform users. And uh, I don't use the platform at all because I don't trade NFTs. So essentially, you can go and check now if you if you have an allocation to this. So if you go over here, the, the lfg.dupe.ag forward slash Sharky is where you can check your allocation. If you've been using the platform, then you can check your allocation now at that link there and you'll see how much Shark you've got. I'm not really sure what it's worth at the moment, but anyway, just thought I'd cover that. And the launch will be taking place very soon. So one to watch if you're interested in trading NFTs on Solana using Sharky. Now, interesting, I uh, saw this Mew meme coin. Now, this is a meme coin section, so a narrative that is kind of losing a little traction right now, but that's everything's pulling back. All old coins and stuff like that are pulling back, as you saw on the uh, total three minus stable coins chart in my last video. The Solana-based meme coins Mew and Whiff are now available on OKX, so there you go. I mean, this wasn't in that chart that I showed before, the table, but um, is in Mew. But uh, Mew is something that uh, I decided to buy. And why did I decide to buy it? Because... Price action actually looks not too bad considering where we are in sort of the sort of price, the kind of price action we're seeing across the board in crypto. So my watch list was nuked by Birdeye. Yes, that's right. I cannot see any of the tokens that I was watching before. Hopefully it comes back. I'm not really sure if it will or not, but anyway. So I decided to look for some new alpha. Why not, right? Why not? And I saw this Mune coin, right? I saw I've, I saw it first in Francium, uh, which if you're wondering what Francium is, I saw that Bohm, Slurf, Small, whatever that is, Shroom, Mew and Popcat all have pith mining rewards. That's right. If you put your memes, any of these memes that you've got into Francium, you can earn pith rewards from it. I mean, 20% on, on, on Slurf is pretty impressive. And I saw Mew's 24, actually it was higher than this, but it's been crushed. I think <laughs> it was 40% yesterday. I think that maybe because I told Curb about it, who has a very large following, that, uh, that there's ways to earn rewards, maybe they have a large holding and they've decided to put it in there. But anyway, this was at like 40, 42%. We can have a look here. It was actually at 150% at one point. But anyway, so here's a way to earn some yield on your memes. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, I think. Uh, now, Francium, if you're not aware, has been around since the 2021 bull market. And this was something that I used for leveraged yield farming. So you could leverage up your yield farming, essentially. And you, you know you could put a single-sided asset down. There were these different farming strategies and stuff like that. However, during a bear market, which is what followed, you know, 2022, uh, it's very difficult for a platform like this to stay relevant. So it fell into obscurity. Now, they're trying to get some more liquidity back into their ecosystem. 
and even Solana Watch, which is my portfolio tracker, removed Brainsium from it. So I mean, I can't even see the assets that I've put in here, which is kind of annoying. But I've, I've, I keep <laughs> I keep pestering them to put it back in there. So I'm going to keep pestering them to put it back in there, but so I can actually track my memes that I've got put in here. But pretty cool anyway. Pretty cool. But I did see I did see it in there, and then I saw Curb also posted about it, comparing SHIB in 2021. I mean, again, like these are sort of all just fun and games, let's be honest. But here's a fractal. Well, there's no fractal here, but anyway, <laughs> I thought there was a fractal here. But nevertheless, pretty convincing and compelling reasoning to for it to be, you know, maybe part of your portfolio. But this is not financial advice. This is a meme coin. So these are all kind of ridiculous. But I did buy this and I'm up a little bit on it. And uh, yeah, so one of Curb's biggest things they're trying to mention really in this post is that this could be a Asia coin, right? As the Asia, well, as Chinese people are slowly entering more and more into the crypto space after being kind of blocked out. I think a lot of them have just used VPN and stuff like that. And let's see if I can find this. I can't actually find this at all. So I typed in mute on my Weixin and it's not here. So anyway, I don't know how this is available, but anyway, this is uh, Curb is saying Mew on WeChat. Can anyone, any WeChat users confirm? And the answer is I cannot confirm. See, look, it's not there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a few Mews here, but they're not the same ones. Maybe it needs to be confirmed still. But anyway, so that's 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 the whole point of this post is saying, oh, like this could bring in a lot more activity from uh, people on WeChat. But also because I'm not in China right now, maybe it's not really searching properly. So that's also another thing, right? Could be only old packs, old sticker packs. So I can't confirm that because I'm not in China. Which that doesn't work very well when you're not in China. Anyway, the whole GCR posting is really, really good trader essentially, and it's just saying you know you should be hanging out in WeChat. Many future pumps will be on coins. None of your circle know. So I think it's actually really hard to maintain a crypto WeChat group because you know a few years ago they brought in a the Chinese government brought in a rule that said that if you violate any policies or if you break the law and crypto is not exactly legal in China, then you can get into a lot of trouble. So I don't know. There's definitely would be WeChat chats out there for crypto, but it'd be very hard to find them. I'm going to be honest, it'd be very hard to find them. So anyway, that's uh, this is some compelling reasons. Um, I don't think it'll be the ship of the cycle. I was hoping for a classic curb fractal, but uh, we didn't get one. And uh, anyway, you can earn yield on it and its price action looks pretty decent. I don't know if it still looks like this. Hey, look, my watch list is back on this computer. It's just not working on my other computer. Uh, where did I buy Mew? I bought Mew here. So I think I'm pretty much at break even right now because this was my my trend line breakout. Wait, let me draw that again. This is my trend line breakout. And then I said, if we hold above this range here, so if I just draw this again, again, it's like a two second TA. Hold above this range here, then it's rocket boosters. But we haven't held about a range. We're just creating a range. So anyway, that's where I bought it. So I'm pretty much break even. <laughs> I was actually up a small amount on it yesterday but we gotta wait for that sentiment to shift we gotta wait for that sentiment to shift i'm seeing a lot of talk about mumu as well mumu the bull uh, but it's been down only so i don't know <laughs> maybe this one will come back but uh anyway meme coins right now sentiment not right for meme coins it's just not right for meme coins so anyway i just did a two second ta on that there you go there's my two second ta that's where i bought went up there came back back down here so as you saw maybe it's actually right around here maybe it's right around here right now the price section so anyway and this is the post where I mentioned Francium DeFi with uh, earning PIF. So pretty, pretty cool. And also just quickly with regards to the Slurf pool for the donation pool. Uh, currently it's at around 10% of the pre-sale sol that was donated by the community and the ecosystem. So still better refund than FTX, <laughs> right? Um, so anyway, this is, this is posted by LBank. Still got, you know, six days or so until it's done. But uh, yeah, people have donated to this crazy event and uh you know shows the community in solana's pretty solid okay that's it for the solana video and uh i'm gonna cover injective and some cosmo stuff in a short video coming up but uh for now we'll leave it there so this is cryptodex signing out have a good one